Hello everyone, this is Miss Lindsay. Today we're going to talk about section 3.7 dealing with angle side theorems. The first theorem that we're going to talk about is if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the opposite angles are congruent. For example, if we know that side AB is congruent to side AC, we would know the opposite angles, angle B and angle C, would then be congruent. We will use a shorthand for this in our proofs. That shorthand would be if sides, then opposite angles are congruent. The reverse of this, if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite are congruent. So again, if we have angle E, angle D are congruent, then we would know the sides opposite those, which would be sides DF and EF would be congruent. And the reverse would be true with our shorthand. If angles are congruent, then the opposite sides are congruent. We also have a couple other things that we're going to discuss here. In a triangle, the measure of the largest side is across from the measure of the largest angle, and the measure of the smallest side is across from the measure of the smallest angle. So we take a look at our first example over here on the left. The measure of the angles are given. The measures of the sides are 5, 7, and 10, and we need to fill in those sides where they belong. So the smallest angle, angle D, which is 30 degrees, across from that would be the smallest side would be 5. The largest is 108 degrees, the largest angle, so the largest side would be across from that, which would be 10. Therefore, 7 would be side FD. Let's take a look at the next example here. Go ahead and pause, take a moment, try to fill in the angle measures where they apply. So before we check our answers here, please notice that we do have different units. So we will need to convert 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So if we convert our inches to centimeters, 7.5 times 2.54 would give us 19.05 centimeters. As well as convert 13 inches, that would be 33 0.02 centimeters. Now again, let's take a look at our smallest side, which would be 19.05 side HG. Therefore, angle I would be the smallest angle, 35 degrees. Our largest would be 33.02, so angle G is across from that, which would give us our largest angle of 82. Therefore, angle H would be 63 degrees. Moving on to our next example, here we have a couple restrictions. We have AC is greater than AB. Measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C is less than 180. Then we are given that angle B is 6x minus 45, angle C is 15 plus x. We want to figure out what are the restrictions on x. Well, because AC is greater than AB, we know that 6x minus 45 would be greater than 15 plus x. If we go ahead and solve for x, we would get x is to be greater than 12. And we also know that the measure of angle b plus the measure of angle c must be less than 180. Therefore, 6x minus 45 plus 15 plus x is going to be less than 180. If we go ahead and solve that, we'll get 7. 7x. Minus 30 is less than 180. 7x is less than 210. Therefore, x is less than 30. Therefore, the restrictions on x, x must be greater than 12. And less than 30. Moving on to our next example, which is our first proof. 
Let's go ahead and mark the givens. We have angle N is congruent to angle O. We also know that NP is congruent to QO. We are trying to prove that MP is congruent to MQ. So we're probably looking at trying to solve the triangles on the left, MNP, and the triangle on the right, MOQ, are congruent just because we have that angle on that side. But let's see if we can get another side or another angle. Well, looking at the larger triangle, if you look at triangle M and O, we have angles are congruent. Therefore, the opposite sides would be congruent. So we could get MN is congruent to MO. Therefore, we could prove the triangles by side angle side. Let's go ahead and write that up. So we have our given angle N is congruent to angle O. And we can go right ahead and say MN is congruent to MO. If angles are congruent, then the sides opposite them are congruent. Our next given, NP, is congruent to QO. Given. Triangle MNP is congruent to triangle MOQ by side angle side. And our side would be 2, the angle would be 1, and then our last side would be 3. The next statement would be our proof statement, NP is congruent to NQ by CPC CPC. On our second proof, go ahead and pause for a moment, mark the given statements, see if you can figure out which triangles we need to prove congruent to each other. Again, we could have some overlapping triangles here, so take a moment Mark the givens and see if you can figure out which triangles we need to prove congruent before we proceed. Okay, so we have our givens marked. We have RU is congruent to ST. We have angle RUT is congruent to angle STU. And hopefully you have figured out that we have Triangle RUT is going to be congruent to triangle STU by using the reflexive property with UT is congruent to itself. So let's go ahead and write that up. So we have UT, excuse me, UR is congruent to ST by given. Angle RUT is congruent to angle STU, also given. And then UT is congruent to UT, reflexive property. And then our overlapping triangle RUT is congruent to triangle STU by side angle side. Step one, two, and three. Now let's take a look. We are trying to prove UVT, the triangle in the middle here, UVT is isosceles. Therefore, definition of isosceles, we have to prove two sides congruent. We cannot directly go to the sides UV and VT from the triangle RUT and STU. However, we can get the angles 1 and 2. congruent by CPCTC. So again, that's the smaller angle of the two overlapping triangles, which then would allow us to say UV is congruent to VT. If angles are congruent, then the opposite sides 
are congruent, which allows us to go to our approved statement. Triangle U B T is isosceles with at least two sides of a triangle are congruent. So at this time, go ahead and finish uh, the last two problems for class tomorrow, and we will review over those at the beginning of class. And this concludes the notes from section 3.7.